Welcome to the Addiction Recovery Channel. I'm Ed Baker. I'm your host producer. I'm very pleased uh, to be here today. Today we have as a special guest, uh, Senator Tanya Vahovsky. Um, Senator Vahovsky is going to join us today and talk about the um, tragic uh, situation that Vermont faces um, with um, basically overdose and uh, accidental uh, overdose death in Vermont. Thank you for being on the show, Tanya. Thank you so much for having me, Ed. I am happy to be here, though I wish I didn't have to be here. You know, we have a really tragic um, set of circumstances that are playing out that I wish weren't, but yeah. I'm happy to be here to talk about it and to bring light to it. Yeah, thank, thank you so much, and I know you're very busy. Um, this report came out today. This is a report from the Vermont Department of Health. And um, tragically is, is the only word you can use. As of uh, September 2023, there were 180 fatal opioid uh, overdose uh, deaths uh, incidents in Vermont. This is 180 in three quarters of the year, as opposed to 169 last year, 2022. Overdose deaths in Vermont this year are up 21, there's a 21 percent increase over the three-year average preceding this year. And I, I need to make it clear that, that that number 180 is not including a potential other 21 deaths that are still pending. Coroners, health examiners have to um, make a final decision about the cause of death. So there's potentially 201 or potentially 201 uh, overdose deaths in Vermont in the first three quarters of 2023. Senator Bahovsky. What do we make of this? I mean, the, there's. I think we can look at a lot of different reasons why this is happening, and I think what we we have to make of it is that this is a tragedy. This is a tragedy for our communities. This is a tragedy for every one of the families that has lost someone, and it's a tragic life lost. And you know, I think we often find ourselves sort of scratching our head, what do we do about this tragedy? And I can certainly think about a lot of things we can do and a lot of things we shouldn't do. And what we, what we have to do, though, is, is respond in scale with the tragedy that we're seeing. You know, I think some of the reasons we're seeing this is economic insecurity, despair, um, and as well as the things that are going into drugs. I mean, so much of what we're seeing in illicit substances, it's because it's an unregulated market, people have no idea what they're getting. And so the, therefore, they really have no idea how to safely use those drugs. I mean, drug use is as old as humans, you know, humans have, for as long as there's been recorded history, engaged in some level of psychoactive substance use. However, they haven't always had, had only access to such unregulated, unsafe supplies. I mean, largely what we're seeing in the streets right now, some of it doesn't even have opioids in it. It is mm -hmm. made up of xylazine and other, only other adulterants that we don't know how to respond to. And I think one of the things I'm really worried about is the more we focus on our crime and punishment response, the more those adulterants that we don't know how to respond to are going to flood the streets, making them even our, the supply even less safe. I, I couldn't agree with you more. I worry about it all the time that this population, according to Vermont statistics, 70 percent, 76 percent of overdose deaths are people who have had no contact with the helping system. There are people who are languishing in the shadows. Many of them have uh, mental health uh, challenges, uh, adverse childhood experiences. Some of them are unsheltered. They're, they're a very, very difficult to engage population. And as you point out, with law enforcement coming at them in even harsher manners that it's come at them in the past, they're forced deeper into the shadows and will die at ever increasing rates. But you've mentioned something interesting. What is it? Let's take fentanyl for a second. What is your take on, on fentanyl? I mean, we know right now that a lot of the Vermont market is fentanyl, which is, you know, a synthetic created opioid of varying potency because a lot of it is not being created in laboratories. It's being created sort of on the streets in illicit ways without regulation. Um, and it's much, much more potent 
than heroin. I mean, very little of the supply on the streets in Vermont right now actually has any heroin in it. It's, it's primarily fentanyl. And what we're actually starting to see is some of it is not even opioid. It's other adulterants and no opi opioid at all. It's benzodiazepines and xylazine and tranquili animal yeah. tranquilizers. Yeah. Um, and we don't know how to respond to that. And I think that is in response to, well, this thing has been criminalized, so we'll use something different. You know, fentanyl is is really the scourge right now in Vermont, but there are some U.S. states where they don't see any fentanyl anymore. Mm -hmm. It's moved completely to something else. Mm -hmm. And so I think, you know, that, that over-criminalization, no matter what point you're doing it, is really just kind of like a dangerous game of, like, whack-a-mole. Yeah. Like, we get this one and something yeah. else pops yeah. up, rather than really responding to yeah. the underlying issues that are causing people to use. It, it, it brings up this idea, this concept of, I think it's called the iron rule of prohibition. When something is prohibited, something worse is created if there's a demand for it. And, and um, you know, we're, we're behind the eight ball uh, in Vermont. You're, you're a senator from, from Chittenden County. Um, I was at a meeting recently with Sarah George, and we're on course this year to equal the number of deaths last year. It'll be probably over 50, uh, maybe more. So one person a week in Chittenden County. The great concentration, by the way, of death is right in downtown Burlington. When you look at a heat map, it, it, it frightens you. It's all downtown City Hall Park, all around downtown Burlington. As a, as a Vermonter, as a senator from Chittenden County, what, what do you feel when you, when you see what's happening? What do you feel when you, when you realize what's going on? I mean, I'm heartbroken. I'm heartbroken that we are caught in a cycle of prohibition and increased punishment that we know from history doesn't work mm -hmm. and that people are dying because of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, I don't have anything else to add. I'm, I'm simply heartbroken. It, you know, it's interesting that uh, Nora Volkov, the director of NIDA, recently in an interview uh, condemned abstinence-based treatment. When abstinence is a requirement for treatment, we lose lives. We have to find ways to reach people without demanding that they abstain from drugs. Now, to the viewing, viewing audience, this is a first part of um, a two-part uh, series. First part is talking about problems, second part is talking about solutions. So Senator Vahovsky will be on the second part of the show with a panel talking about solutions in Vermont. But, but, but to stick with, with the, you know, currently what we're seeing, you know, you've been watching it. What, I'd like you to comment on the velocity, like how quickly this tragedy seems to be accelerating in Vermont. I mean, it certainly is. You can simply look at the numbers. Not only are we on track to meet the numbers from last year, we're on track to blow them out of the water like right. we've done for year after year after year, right. which is very indicative to me that what we are doing is not working. We are filling our jails and prisons with people who are struggling with substance use disorder. It's, I think, 50% of the people that are incarcerated in Vermont struggle with opioid use disorder. And I think it's closer to 80% struggle with some sort of substance use yeah. disorder. Yeah. We are wasting resources incarcerating people and eating them up through our criminal legal system and kind of spitting them out on the other end, where they're more likely to die of an overdose, where they're yeah. more likely yeah. to be more engaged in illicit substance use. And so I think, you know, when I look at that velocity, it's, it is the indication on paper that what we are doing, what we've been doing is simply not working and we absolutely have to pivot in another direction and respond to this as the public health crisis that it is, not, a criminal justice or public safety crisis. And I'm not saying it doesn't have public safety implications, mm -hmm. but responding with only a criminal legal framework is mm -hmm. clearly not working. Right, when will in fact worsen the problem. It, it, we can see that it's worsening the problem. We see it in the numbers of the people in our, in our carceral system, and we see it with the numbers of people who are dying in our communities. And frankly, we see it with, the, with what we're hearing out in, in public where people who are not using are being impacted because people are unhoused and don't have a place to u use the illicit substance they're using or people are in such economic despair they're stealing to meet their needs. This is spilling out beyond the individuals that are immediately impacted to impact every member of our community. And, and it, is, it is a crisis point. Yeah, I, I understand that well because it's a, it's a systems problem. 
And it was, if something doesn't happen in isolation. When it happens, it affects everything. And um, we're going to, you know, j just so the audience knows, Senator Vahovsky will be back talking about solutions. To sum up, it looks like what we're saying, Senator, is that we have a, a, a population that is extremely vulnerable and at risk for death. We have people addicted and multinational companies preying upon their addiction and feeding them lethal drugs. And we, as a, as a state and as a country, are not protecting them. We as a state and as a country aren't protecting anyone. We are not doing what we have to do to respond to this emergency. And we, we have to pivot. We have to do something different. We have to keep people alive. Thank you. Thank you for your leadership, and I'm looking forward to the pivot. Me too. <laughs>